Good morning and welcome to the, um, the second session of Project Status Talks. Congratulations to making it to Friday. Um, hope you enjoyed the banquet as much as I did last night. Our first speaker this morning is Juan de Santander Vela, um, who started his career working in embedded software. Um, he uh, left that to pursue a PhD in astronom astronomical data management, which he achieved with the University of Grenada. Grenada sorry. Um, he joined the ESO after that, where he worked on archive, um, in the archive department, dealing with data quality, and the Alma Computing Integrated Product Team, where he helped deliver the Alma Science Archive User Portal. After re returning to Spain, um, he uh, joined the SKA organization, uh, where he is currently the system engineer for all software systems of the SKA, and that includes the control systems. Okay, thanks uh, for having me. It's been a pleasure assisting to my first eCollect. So I would like to tell you a little bit about the Square Kilometer Array. The name comes from a Square Kilometer Array of collecting area, and this is because we have uh, several science drivers, and most of them is trying to get to the history of the universe. So it's, uh, we're trying to see that in the radio range, so we're going uh, far down in uh, frequency. So we are interested in learning about the early galaxies, uh, the first stars and the first galaxies, what uh, we call the Epoch of Ionization as well. We're going to be helping also in gravitational wave astronomy through what we call pulsar time arrays. By observing uh, carefully timed pulsars, we will be able to detect where a gravitational wave has gone through uh, some of these ensembles. We're going to be able to, uh, to do a galaxy tomography so that we can do uh, evolution, uh, evolutionary studies of galaxies. Uh, we are interested in doing also uh, exoplanets, um, molecule science, and uh, search for extraterrestrial intelligence in what we call the cradle of life kind of studies. Then we're also helping cosmology, uh, trying to find out about dark energy and the large scale structure of the universe. And uh, we will be quite sensitive in polarization so that we hope that we can uh, help untangling the cosmic magnetism problem. And because we will be much more sensitive than many uh, of the telescopes, is, as Professor uh, Kocha has said, it opens a new window to exploring the unknown. So we think we have one of the broadest ranges, or if not the broadest, uh, for science in any uh, facility worldwide. So the, the SK Observatory vision is having, uh, we will be in three sites, we will have uh, two telescopes, but a single observatory. So people will interact with a single entity. We are currently in the design phase where we are being held by around 600 engineers and scientists. Uh, this has been costed by their own institutes and we find it around 80% complete. We're going to do a pre-CDR uh, meeting and uh, we are, what we're deciding, uh, designing is what we call the SK's phase one, which is around 10% of the SK vision. We have a construction cap of 670 million uh, in 2000, 2016 money, and we have an estimate for operations of around uh, 80 million. We're going to have in the mid telescope Meerkat Integrated, which is the South African telescope with 64 antennas. And we will have an, a development program uh, which will be costed around 20 million per year so that we can keep improving them. And the regional centers where people will be able to uh, deal with the SK data are outside of this uh, budget. And then we hope to be able to start with what we call SK phase two by the mid 20s. Uh, and this will be around 2000 dishes across uh, Southern Africa and a major expansion in Australia. And we hope to be there for around 50 years, so we need to design for reliability and for adaptability of the system. These are the member countries on your left, and we are currently in discussions with Germany, France, Portugal, Spain, Switzerland, Japan, and South Korea to be able to join. And what you can see here is that the partner countries where we'll, where we will have SK-1 mid stations when, for SK-2 when we go to the longer baselines. And we're in the process of becoming an intergovernmental organization for reasons that I will explain later. 
So these are the design consortia that we have, currently nine of them, the infrastructures, and the control system is what we call the telescope manager. We have uh, two additional uh, consortia for what we call the advanced instrumentation program that we hope that we can put into place when we go to the uh, SKS phase two. <coughs> So we, these are the two sites that will be located at. Uh, in the first one for SK1 Low, we will be in what's known as the Marchion Zone Sire. Uh, th th these are, that's for a scale. That's where we will have the Marchion Radio Astronomy Observatory. Uh, that will be the operation center. And this will be the data analysis center. So you can see that we have to go a little bit. We have to, to have a lot of fiber going here. And the interesting thing is that the system here play, uh, works for the online calibration of the telescope. So we need to have 24-7 link here to, to make that operable. For the uh, mid site, we have it in South Africa in the... Um, I'm not sure if I click. Yes, so here for a scale, these are 500 kilometers. That's where this main site is located. This is one of the engineering centers that we will have nearby and uh, Cape Town. The reason we are in these deserts is because we are very sensitive to radio frequency interference, so we need to avoid it. So. Uh, could you, ah, it's going on. So here what I'm showing is the two different technologies that we will have the telescopes. This is for the low uh, frequency aperture array and these are the mid telescopes. These will cover a range from 350 megahertz to 24 gigahertz while the low goes from 50 to 350 megahertz. So together we cover from 50 megahertz to 24 gigahertz, which goes next to the lower limit of ALMA, so we can have a very good view of what the universe looks like in the radio frequencies. So as I'm saying, we 80% complete in the design phase, and these are some of the, the, this is the final design for the SK1 mid antennas. We will have a surface uh, RMS of three, uh, 350 micron. We have tested that through the prototypes. We have uh, 66 different kind of panels, these kind of triangular panels that can be assembled very easily and that they are designed so that they keep that surface accuracy. And these are the molds for the subreflector that goes in there. As you can see, it's an offset Gregorian configuration so that we can look at the sky and we don't have four arms occluding the, the view. These are some additional uh, prototyping that uh, has happened and designed. This is the band five, the one that covers up to the, right now up to 10 gigahertz. The 24 gigahertz will be a later deployment. Uh, these are band two receivers, which are uh, a little bit above uh, 900 megahertz, if memory serves well. And this is one of the Pulsar Search uh, prototypes. Pulsar Search is going to be very important for SK1 mid, and we try, to, and we will try to collect all of the pulsars that exist in the galaxy. And as we said, we're going to integrate Meerkat. This is the precursor uh, in uh, South Africa. And currently, 49 of the 64 antennas have been built and integrated. And this is one of the images from the first light of Meerkat. Going to the low, uh, this is one of our prototype station, what we call the Aperture Array Verification System 1. Uh, you can see that all of, the uh, all of the signals from the antennas goes in these boxes where uh, it's processed uh, and been formed so that we can then uh, generate the uh, station beams for correlation. Because of the distance, it's been found that powering things with uh, uh, solar energy is cost efficient and uh, also help us be more uh, carbon neutral. Uh, so we're deploying, I think, what it was at the time, the largest battery in uh, Australia. And this is uh, one of the final designs for the correlator and beamformer boards for low, the correlator system. We are also improving our headquarters. This is the existing, uh, this is for a scale, the Lovell telescope, which is a 70 meter dish across. 
Uh, this is the existing building. You can see that it finishes here. And we are building a, an increased area where the uh, key feature will be the council chamber, which will be able to hold up to 160 people. And the idea is with this uh, building trying to create a nexus for real astronomy. This is a notional data flow view of the square kilometer array. In the case of the, of the low telescope, we have two petabits per second uh, coming from the antennas into within what we call the LFA data network. That the, there it is processed and being formed, added, so that we get it down to 7.2 terabits per second, going into the signal and data transport uh, digital data backhaul. And that is just transfer function to the central signal processor, which is the correlator and uh, beamformer. In uh, mid, uh, the aggregate output of the 197 antennas is 8.8 .8 terabits per second, which is transported to this CSP. The, this is essentially FFTs and uh, other kind of processing, and uh, the aggregate processing power that we need is 50 petaflops per second, which is just half the current top uh, supercomputer in the world. We will send five terabits per second to the science data processor that will need 250 petaflops to be able to cope with the data. So that means we only need 2.5 times more processing power than the current top uh, supercomputer. And we will send uh, 300 petabytes per year for long-term storage. So that's a lot of data. How do we astronomers deal with it? We have, we'll have the SK regional centers, which will be a collaborative alliance. It's, the participation is out of the scope of the SK funding, and we, we can have as many as uh, people want to put, and they can specialize in different things. But the main thing is that there will be a science gateway so that SK users don't know uh, whether they have to go uh, to somewhere else or whether the data is hosted. They, they will only see a unified uh, science gateway. Uh, they will host the archive and they will also provide analysis capabilities and user support. So we used uh, the Tango control system. Uh, Lorenzo Pivetta presented it in the, uh, in the Monday talks. And uh, as you can see, we've been joining uh, both SK South Africa, SKO, and ENAF. Uh, members of the Tango Controls organization. I'm going to go through this because it's not that interesting, but what we, you can see is that we have more or less similar kind of control hierarchies for both the mid and low telescope with what we call the LMM masters on top. And we, the, the, for mid, we will have many Tango facilities, so this is a challenge that we will need to, to help the collaboration with. Uh, here is a similar slide to what Lorenzo presented, trying to show up how the different facilities integrate. And I'm going to go quickly into how we're going to develop all of this software with so many consortia. And the reason is that we're going to use Agile, a scaled Agile framework, which is a framework done by, the, uh, by a company. Uh, it's a registered trademark, but in a sense, it's trying to scale from a single team to what is called an agile release train that will gather uh, different teams together. And we will have the SKO at the, what we call the large solution level, uh, managing all of that and providing all of the insight and feedback down through all of, the, all of the teams. We got an agreement with CERN recently. And this week, uh, there has been the first meeting of that collaboration, trying to help into developing uh, hard performance perf uh, computing solutions for those 250 petaflops. And we are in the way of becoming a treaty organization. We hope that that treaty organization will be established around early 2019, so that we can start construction er mid-2020 and to ramp up to uh, construction so that we can have fully deployed SK-1 telescopes by uh, early 2026. And we need to be able to do all of that software in that time uh, window so that we can start controlling and doing the verification. So we are happening. Uh, we uh, have all of the pro these prototypes constructed and deployed, and we hope to be oper in operations by the mid-20s. So thanks a lot, and thanks everyone that has been contributing talks about the SK across the Ecolabs.
Thank you. Thank you.